Hi everyone, I'm Jess and I'm the content manager here at Course Report. Course Report is the resource for helping people find the right coding boot camps for them. You can use the Course Report website to research the best coding boot camps all over the world, as well as insights on which coding languages to learn, where to apply, how to get into a boot camp, and so much more. Today, I'm speaking with a recent boot camp alum from Coding Temple. So, one of the trademarks of a coding boot camp is that students usually build a final project. So, this boot camp grad is going to walk us through their capstone project, but First, let me introduce them. Jordi Caceres was working as a registered nurse before reskilling with Coding Temple's full-time online bootcamp this year. Jordi, thank you so much for speaking with me today. Um, I know you just graduated from Coding Temple, which means you were very, very recently working on a very cool capstone project. Um, but first, I'd love to hear a bit about your online bootcamp experience with Coding Temple. So, just first, what inspired you to make that career change from nursing into software engineering? Um, well, first, thank you so much for having me um, on Course Report. Uh, so I definitely, um, nursing has played in a very important role in my life. Um, I met patients from all different uh, backgrounds, th different demographics. I learned very unique stories. Um, I was able to advocate for those who didn't have a voice. <clears throat> nursing, allowed me to work with an interdisciplinary team uh, with one common goal, um, and that was to return patients to a, life a lifestyle they desire. It was very rewarding as a career, um, but most of the tasks were very strenuous on my body. I have a background of fitness, and of course that comes with um, multiple injuries that can occur. Um, and you know the things that were uh, required of me involved uh, moving patients, which included transferring and preventative care. Uh, and I felt software engineering is a career in which not only I can use my critical thinking skills I got from nursing, uh, teamwork, collaboration, and communication skills as well. Uh, but my work also feels lasting. Um, it's not strenuous on my body. And I feel like I'm able to leave something out there useful for others um, that I developed myself. And there are so many online boot camps out there now. So what stood out about Coding Temple for you? So um, before making a serious transition to a new career, uh, I felt it was it's very important to find the right boot camp. Um, you know, it does cost a lot of money um, and you're making a huge commitment right off the bat. Um, so of course I did my research uh, and there are definitely a lot of boot camps to choose from. Uh, so I thought popularity doesn't necessarily mean uh, what's best for me. Um, I took into consideration many reviews online, uh, which I, I feel a lot of others should do as well. Um, and also cohort size. Uh, Coding Temple has a cohort size that ranges from 10 to 12. And I feel like instructors are more one-to-one -one personalized for you. Um, and I know there's other boot camps out there that are, you know, from 20 to 30 uh, cohorts size. Um, so I felt um, not only do I want that one-on-one -on -one time in which I can ask questions, um, but also I felt like I can be heard. And if I do have a question, um, it can get answered and it's more individualized to you. Um, so that's what made me choose Coding Simple and their instructors are awesome from the reviews I read. Um, and I knew from that, from there, there, it was the way to go. Overall, what did you learn at Coding Temple? Like the main skills or languages that they cover? So definitely Coding Temple was very Python heavy um, for the first half. Uh, the prerequisites they actually require of you to do some self-learning before going into the bootcamp was uh, the standard HTML, CSS uh, for styling and some basic Python. And then from there, they develop your skills onwards. Um, and then once you're done with advanced Python, uh, I also learned JavaScript, uh, a lot of React, TypeScript. So there's three languages you learn uh, already, um, as well as many uh, different databases and backend stuff that can help utilize you to build a, a application that works for you. 
Since this was an online boot camp, did you still feel connected to your cohort and your instructors? I think one of the best outcomes I can get or I did get from this boot camp was the connection I got from my cohort and my instructors. I feel like we're all very close now. Um, and I think that small cohort size does play a role in that. Um, you know, we still communicate with each other. I still uh, talk to my instructor even then, um, even now after graduating boot camp. Um, great, great career advice. Um, you know, they help you with the job search. Um, and, you know, we connect on LinkedIn and we still talk. And even now there's questions about, you know, what applications they're building now. Uh, I can go help them out now. They can help me out now. It's not like once you're done with the boot camp, it has to be over. The journey, I feel, starts from there. And it's a great feeling. And I'm very glad. We're going to dive into your capstone project, but I'd love to know, like, in general, did you end up building a lot of projects while you were in the boot camp? Yeah. So in Coding Temple, um, they make you build projects every weekend. Uh, so it is meant to reinforce everything we've just learned that week. So uh, let's say, for example, we are working on database SQL. Uh, we'd have a weekend project in which we can uh, build something that utilizes SQL. Of course, there are requirements, um, you know, what's expected, but they always push you to go further and beyond with your projects. Never just go for the bare minimum. And I feel like those projects definitely sparked some creativity to um, my capstone project now. Um, one thing I also do love about these weekend projects is that even though, you know, you first start off and you feel like the project wasn't that great or to your standards, um, you can always go back on them and refactor them and work them to something even better. Uh, and then you can use that to your portfolio. All right, Jordy, let's have you share your screen so you can walk us through what you built um, for your capstone. All right, Jordy. So walk us through this project that you built. Um, I guess first off, like what is the problem that this project is solving? Yeah, so this project is about uh, discovering um, basically tattoo artists around the world. Um, and I know that sounds, you know, not groundbreaking, um, but I felt like this was a passion project, especially for me. Um, I'm very, I'm very into tattoos. Um, but I noticed one of the problems that I, I usually encounter when trying to look for an artist um, is the searching product. Uh, process. Um, I noticed you'd have to, you know, Google uh, tattoo artists near me. Uh, it would show up with about 30 to 50 different tattoo shops around you. You'd have to go into each store, then go into each artist and then find their social media just to see what what art they have and see if they if you even like that uh, design designer style. Uh, so I try to make an application in which it makes it that much easier. So this application I called Inkview uh, is basically an application in which um, tattoo artists are presented seamlessly uh, with their social media, all their contact information, and they're categorized based on what category of arts they work on. Yeah, I would love if you could just walk us through like how a user can actually interact with this site. This sounds like such a cool like hub of artists. Absolutely. So this is the uh, landing page. Um, this is what users would see when they first come into the website. Um, most of the stuff here is um, not really part of the functionality, more so just uh, for display or some future ideas to consider for me, uh, like, you know, featuring artists uh, for the month. Um, and then here, users would see the categories of what type of tattoo style they would like. So here we have traditional, Japanese, and it ranges all the way down to um, eight more different categories. Of course, these categories can expand in the future. Um, this is just a starting project. You don't even need to sign in right off right off the bat. Uh, this this website allows you to view artists 
as they are on the website. You can discover uh, artists. And if I like something here, um, I can just go to their social media, save it, um, you know, follow them, contact them. Um, but one thing this uh, website does utilize is being able to save uh, all your favorited artists. Let's say you have about six or seven different artists that you want to save um, after viewing them on this website. In this uh, manner, you would need to sign in. All right, so I'll create a, a users can sign up as well. I can mm -hmm. create an account. Uh, I'll call this person test two. Test two. Um, just a random email. And Notice here, um, there's also a questionnaire that asks you if you are a tattooed artist. And this is based uh, just solely for my curiosity. I like to see the users that sign up if they're viewing artists as a tattoo artist themselves, or um, they're just users interested in finding tattoo artists. And this is important because there's also another functionality that this website can do. This website also allows you to register yourself as a tattoo artist to be displayed on the website. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. okay. And I'm able to sign in as well. And I'm redirected to uh, your profile page. So you can see here uh, you have a, a table of saved artists. Um, of course, the table is uh, blank. I just registered right now. Um, and you're also given the option to delete any saved artists that you had uh, saved in the past. So if I can just go back to the gallery, let's say I want to go save um, Henry Big, I can add him to my watch list. So if I would go to my profile now, I would see this is an artist that I was interested in when I was browsing the page. Um, I come back, I forgot who I was interested in. I don't want to browse the entire page again. Um, I have my own personalized watch list right here. And let's say it didn't work out. I don't like his style anymore. I don't see why you wouldn't. Um, you can go ahead and delete him from your watch list. Artists can register themselves to be displayed on the website. Uh, one of the issues I had uh, when thinking of this project was if this is a website fueled by a database in which artists are put into a database and then displayed on my website, I can't sit around all day and put artists into a database one by one all around the world. And I realized <clears throat> this problem can be solved just by self-sufficiency. Um, if a user wants to be displayed on their website, they can help me out. They, they would themselves be added to the database, uh, without me really doing anything except for checking if this is somebody I want on my website. For example, um, you can register yourself to be displayed on our uh, gallery. So I can upload an image. And here it says, choose one art piece to be displayed on the website. This is one image that every user would see. So it should be like a showstopper. Um, I do have a picture of my dog. His name is Bagel. So let's say I'm an artist. I'm uploading an image. Uh, this is my tattoo art that I want to be the showstopper. I can put in my business email. Um, I'm currently signed in as random at gmail.com. Uh, my nickname is Rando, and that's my Instagram as well. So if, uh, this will be a hyperlink that they can click to go to your Instagram page. Um, and you can choose what category you'd like to be displayed on. Uh, so if somebody's interested in realism or Japanese, I can say that you know my art reflects this type of style or black work and I'm based in this country. So currently I'm only doing countries, uh, but for future 
progress on this application. I hope to go into specific cities and states to really narrow it down. Um, but then nothing happens. Um, and this is simply because you're sending a request to be displayed on the website. Now, that role to be accepted is based on an administrator's decision. If I were to sign in as an administrator, and this is something that is checked in the back end side of things, uh, I'm not sure if you, you noticed, there's an admin button here now. And this wasn't previously there when I was signed in as a random at gmail.com. Uh, this is a lot of uh, backend checking and uh, logic behind it. So I can click here and I have now access to what is called a pending table that I created. Um, and it shows all the users that try to register to be displayed on the website. So I can say, uh, I see your image. I can look at it and this image is uploaded to an API Cloudinary, so it's completely safe. Um, and I see my dog Bagel. And let's say I do not want Bagel on my website. I can just then do all of this seamlessly on my website and accept and reject users um, on the website. Same thing can happen where I can instantiate an artist here based on their image URL from Cloudinary's API, their nickname, social, email, country, category that they want to be displayed in, and their user ID. And if I submit, um, I will then see them displayed on my website. And I can quickly show that right now. So now let's say I go one day check on pending users i can then see okay this user is a black work artist and they want to be displayed on my website and let's say i do like their image i do see their social media i like their work i think it is sufficient to be displayed on my on my website i can then just copy this information over um so this would be their image url taken safely from cloudinary's api uh, their nickname, which is random, their social, also random, their email, random at gmail.com, their country is Thailand, category was black work, and their user ID. And this is what really ties it all in. Because with this, I now instantiated the new artist. And as you can see, this is the accepting form. So now, if I were to go to Blackwork, not only would I see artists that are already displayed or that were accepted previously, but I now see this new accepted artist that I can go visit or add to my own watch list. The way, let's say, after I accept somebody, I feel I don't want them anymore. Um, I can then go in the back end after this is already instantiated and just remove them from the database uh, from the source, basically. And uh, Bagel here won't be displayed anymore on the website. <laughs> That's so cool. And I'd love to know, like, what are the main technologies or programming languages that you use to build this site? And feel free to show the back end if that makes sense. Absolutely. So. Uh, the languages I used were primarily Python uh, and JavaScript. So uh, the styling was done with a CSS template, um, but the logic behind it was done with uh, Python's Jinja 2 and Flask. Uh, so all these forms were done with uh, Flask itself um and the logic behind it in which i can tie logic into html was done with jinja too so as you can see a lot of this was done with python um some some of it was done with uh, javascript but the logic wasn't done with javascript that was more for styling um and this 
is basically a handler for uh, API calls. Um, basically, how I got my information from the database to my website was all through uh, this medium here uh, called Insomnia. And I can actually demonstrate here how I would delete uh, that pending artist that I just recently accepted. So I can see, um, I can view all my artists here. So this was done through Heroku. So this is actually hosted on a website. You can go on the website itself, sign in, sign up uh, if I send you a link. Uh, so this is not on my local computer here. I have all the other methods here to do that. So I'll do the stuff on production is what we call it. So now I can see uh, all my artists just by retrieving it through this API call. So now this was the recent user I just added. So I can get their ID. And I can delete this artist by their ID through this API call. And then I get returned the object that was just recently deleted. So this is Rando. I'm so sorry, Rando. Um, he's no longer in our database. And I can actually show that if I just go back to my application, if I were to refresh, Bagel's not there anymore. Object-oriented programming is what defines a great application. Um, it's used in any application that is, you know, involves a lot of logic. Um, and it's, very, it's an, a very important topic to get used to. And I would say um, it plays a strong role in building amazing applications. Um, and that was just an example of how object-oriented programming was utilized here. That's Thank you so much for walking us through that. Um, I'd love to know, is this everything that you learned at Coding Temple? Or when you were building this project, did you have to learn something brand new in order to make it function? So I feel this whole project was a bit of both um i definitely learned a lot uh through coding temple i learned the foundation um but also when you want to go above and beyond you have to do a little more research um just to make it that much better um and coding temple itself uh, reinforces that self-learning is a big part of being a great developer um and I'm always going to continue to self-learn uh, and do my research to find new products and new ways to make applications better. Um, so they definitely reinforced uh, doing research and finding ways to just make your project that much more better. Um, I did learn a lot of the core foundation and logic through Coding Temple, but here and there, uh, you know, Resources like Stack Overflow definitely helped in uh, finding ways to make something I want differently because, of course, a boot camp is only there for just, you know, the core principles and not, they won't really get in depth into everything you yourself want to do. Uh, and I feel like in this application, um, there was a lot of stuff that I wanted to do that wasn't covered in the boot camp. But it's, you know, definitely reinforced to go above and beyond and do that research yourself. Um, and I got support from my instructors to do that. Uh, so that's where I say it's a little bit of both. And how long did they give you um, to build this project? So the project itself took one week for in terms of official uh, timeline. Um, but they encourage you to start as early as possible. The idea of the capstone project itself is brought up in the first week and re brought up again in the middle of the boot camp. I started this project uh, around the middle of the boot camp. I felt 
I wouldn't be able to start until the last week because a lot of the stuff that we need, such as backend, um, SQL, PostgreSQL, all of these things we were learning later on in the boot camp. But my instructors, you know, again, encouraged start as early as possible. And as you learn, you can adapt or change your project so that you're that much more prepared. So it's not like they just throw you into the wild. They don't throw you into the jungle. They, they're definitely very supportive. Um, and I definitely got one-on-one -on -one time, to, you know, to ask questions, to run ideas by my instructors and get the help that I needed to make something that I, I truly love at the end of the day. Did you end up presenting this capstone project in some kind of virtual demo day? Yes. So we actually did a demo day on our last day. Um, and I presented this project. Um, actually, I added more features to this project since then. Um, but this was the project that I presented. Um, it utilized everything I learned. Um, and it is essentially a passion project that I was very interested in. Jordy, so you are on the job hunt now since you just graduated. Do you anticipate speaking about this final project during any of your upcoming job interviews? Absolutely. So this is actually one of the projects I'm most excited to talk about uh, with interviewers. Um, one thing that I also want to do is to refactor this project, um, utilizing different languages like React or JavaScript, rather, with the frameworks of React and Redux. Um, and I think just constantly refactoring this project will allow me to not only develop my skills, but present something out there for employers on top of the many projects we've developed uh, in Coding Temple. And in general, how did Coding Temple prepare you for the tech job hunt? So this is one of the, the questions I was had in my mind uh, mm -hmm. prior to uh, signing up for Coding Temple. Um, their job search uh, curriculum is very rigorous in terms of they want you to get a job uh, and they will do anything it takes for you to get a job. Um, there's uh, meetings that, you know, uh, you talk with alumni. Uh, there's different Slack channels in which you can uh, practice interview questions. Um, there's people sharing job opportunities left and right. Um, we have amazing instructors uh, that help uh, with mock interviews for the job interview process. Um, and it's every week. And once you get a job, they do this weekly meeting in which you can talk about your experience. And you definitely learn a lot from the people who just got hired, their process on how they got hired and, you know, what they went through to get that job. Um, it's it, I love the alumni uh, portion of, of Coding Temple. That sounds so helpful. Um, and when it comes to your own job hunt, what kinds of tech roles do you feel qualified to apply for right now? I feel at the moment I'm qualified for full stack positions. We learned a lot of front end design, uh, back end, and even middleware, uh, which encompasses all of uh, what a full stack developer is. So I feel like if I was presented with either one of those roles, I would be more than capable to perform those tasks. Jordi, so far, do you feel like your nursing background has helped you as you've as you've learned software engineering and now as you're going to start a new career as a software engineer? Absolutely. So in nursing, uh, we we utilized a lot of uh, critical thinking skills. Uh, and I feel like software engineering is all about using critical thinking, uh, a lot of logic um, behind it. Um, it. Nursing has definitely made me more aware to uh, think outside the box, which is what you would need to do in uh, coding problems and uh, job interviews. Do you have any advice for future incoming coding Temple students, like anything you wish you had known before you had started? Absolutely. Um, and that's uh, to be okay with uh, the idea that you're not going to know everything. Um, and that's in the boot camp process and the job hunting process. You learn a lot of stories from people who already have jobs. Um, and there's that imposter syndrome 
that that word lurks around everywhere you go it's okay to not know everything and i feel like you should take your time and just enjoy the journey um because you're not going to know everything um don't burn yourself out if you feel unprepared uh just you know take the time to just practice little by little and just it'll be okay <laughs> And at this point in your career change journey, was Coding Temple worth it for you? Absolutely. And I'm so glad I joined Coding Temple. Um, this is the start of a new journey uh, in my life. And I know it's going to take me places that I won't know, uh, but I'm excited to find out. Uh, and I've learned this new skill uh, that I, I couldn't say I would have done without Coding Temple. And that's an excellent place to wrap up this project spotlight. It was so awesome to see what you were actually able to build in just a few weeks at Coding Temple. And so thank you so much for talking with me today, Jordi, and sharing your project and best of luck in this new career. Um, we will be posting a recording and a transcript of this video interview with Jordi on the course report blog with contact information for Coding Temple, just in case you're interested in applying for one of their upcoming cohorts. And thanks so much to all of you for watching. Tweet at us, email us, and let us know which topic you'd like us to cover next on the course report blog. And in the meantime, follow course report on Facebook and Twitter. And if you're a bootcamp alumni, don't forget to post a review of your own bootcamp experience on course report your review is a huge help to anyone who's thinking of getting into tech today mm -hmm.